He is a midfielder with a nose for the ball. Here's Dax McCarty, looks at goal! A New York Red Bull who takes the train to work. This stop is Harrison. And partakes in the best the Big Apple has to offer. <laughs> when he walks in the room, you know. No, 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 no false goal! No, no, false goal! When he scores, he shows it. The finish, Dax McCarty! For the next 36 hours, we try to keep up with Dax McCarty. Let's do it. One of the most energetic and colorful characters in the league. We did, Dax. Next on MLS 36. The city that never sleeps bustles with activity as star midfielder Dax McCarty begins his day. The one thing about New York is basically you'll never ever get in trouble for jaywalking, ever. McCarty has one of the most unusual commutes in MLS. Like a true New Yorker, he takes the train. I'm on the PATH train right now, which is extremely convenient because it's about two blocks from my apartment. I just left the train take me to wherever I want to go, and I think that's obviously extremely unique to New York City. These are rare moments of quiet for McCarthy. Over the next 36 hours, there's much to do to prepare for the game against the Philadelphia Union. We got a big game against Philly. It's pretty big in terms of the Eastern Conference. I'm just gonna be preparing for a game like I normally would, hanging out with some friends, um, doing some casual stuff that uh, kind of gets my, my competitive juices flowing, so to speak. Hopefully this will be business as usual and we'll, we'll beat Philly. That was actually against Philly, uh, my first goal of the season against Philly. And I'm not a guy that scores very many goals. I don't score a lot of goals at all, actually. And my initial reaction when I score goals is to just run around like a chicken with my head cut off and scream as loud as I can. And I think that picture probably encapsulates that perfectly. I don't really know what I was doing. It's just kind of like... This stop is Harrison. After a 30-minute train ride, it's now a seven-minute walk to Red Bull Arena. You just see the Red Bull logo. It makes it all pretty real for you, you know? I definitely still get that feeling of uh, butterflies every time you walk up to it because it's something that uh, something that not many people get to experience playing in, uh, in a nice stadium like that. You've got to be kidding me right now. Hey, Mike. This is... I've seen a lot in my day. What? What? You haven't seen? walking through the streets of Harrison. Yeah. Hey. Field. Hey, city commuter, you know? Wow. <laughs> Jealous. Jealous is gross, man. <laughs> 9 a.m. Practice is over an hour away, and McCarty is the first player to arrive. I'm kind of a perfectionist. I hate being late. That's one of my pet peeves. Whoa. You're the first? Lurk in here. Let me turn the lights on in this place. <laughs> what the hell are the lights on in here? I've never seen this before. Yo! 10.15 a.m. The Red Bulls hit the pitch. Tomorrow night's game is a crucial one, as New York sits just one point at a first place in the Eastern Conference, and just one point ahead of their upcoming opponent, the Philadelphia Union. This essentially is a game for first place, depending on how other results go, but it's so tight in the East right now, I don't think I've ever seen the playoff race this tight, so every game matters, and especially because we're playing a, a big rival of ours, um, Philly, and they kind of gave us a little bit of a, a, an ass kicking. Back in Philadelphia, we lost 3-0, and um, you know, that, uh, that hurt our pride a little bit. It's extremely important for us to win this game. It's not good enough to say I'm fronting Connor Casey. The ball gets thrown over by Fabian and I watch it. Whoever's fronting here follows that ball anything from here in front. I should be marking Connor Casey. Nine of the last ten corners, he's coming to this spot. He'd never score. The stakes for the matchup are high, and as a seasoned veteran, McCarty knows part of his job is to keep things light in his customary fashion. Have you ever scored a header in your life? Be honest. The problem is, if you scored a header, you messed up your hair. <laughs> You know, he doesn't shut up, you know, he, he, he's, he wants to be, I think he wants to be on MTV one day, I'm sure. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa! Why would you kick the cone over, dude? I've never seen someone actually kick a cone over when there's a little bit of controversy involved in a point. I had to unfriend him on Twitter because I was, as the coach now, I couldn't take reading any more of that crap, to be honest with you. Luis, you've actually stepped your game up to a level I didn't know you had. He'll talk a bunch of uh, smack. Mary's had no chance against me, man. When he does win, 
you won't hear the end of it if you're on the other team. Ah, play, 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 play. Hey, no, 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 false call, no, no, false call. No, 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 it did not, that, oh, that's, it bounced, it, it bounced inside. False call on Barks. Uh, and that's when I just kind of put my ear earmuffs on and don't listen to Dax for that day. Barks, just stop false calling, man. You don't even know what you were calling. But McCarty isn't all talk. After eight seasons in the league, he has a well-earned reputation as a scrappy vet with strong instincts for the game. A fact that was in full view during the team's recent matchup against league leader Real Salt Lake. We were tied going into to extra time and there was one minute left in the game and I ran into the box and Brandon Barklage played an unbelievable cross. Um, it was perfect. Barklage curls one in. Yes! The finish! Dax McCarty! It was one of those moments where you kind of just had to say, listen, I'm, I don't care if I get injured, I'm going to put my body on the line. And the ball ended up in the back of the net, turned out to be the game winner. Incredible! My only instinct in that moment was to just rip my jersey off. Unbelievable, absolutely incredible. You can't be any more dramatic than this. I don't know why he would take his shirt off because he's not the tannest dude in the world. He's got freckles everywhere, but you know, that's Dax for you. Dax McCarty! The guys on the team see me with my shirt off quite a bit. And I see the jealousy in their eyes, but you know, not many people get to see that and uh, that emotion for me. And I think with, you know, how ripped and shredded I looked, um, I put a picture on Instagram and it got wonderful feedback. <laughs> Guys, show up with the right mentality tomorrow, okay? The right mentality, listen to what we're doing when we're pressing, pay attention on set pieces, do not leave anything unturned tomorrow night. Come with the right attitude, you execute what we're trying to do, we'll attain that. First place, first place. Let's go. 11.30 a.m. The Red Bulls have finished preparations for tomorrow night's game against Philadelphia. Kickoff is 33 hours away. p.m. With training finished for the day, Dax McCarty returns to his apartment, a small source of pride for the Red Bull star midfielder. This is the leisure room. This is basically <laughs> where everything happens. Here we're entering the kitchen dining room area, which uh, is not very far from the leisure area. So as you can see, I don't spend too much time in the bedroom. Most apartments in the city aren't apartments that people actually want to live in. They just do because it's all they can afford. But I think this place is a mansion compared to uh, some other apartments in the city. So this is my girlfriend, Jen, and her lovely pet <laughs> French bulldog, Koji. This dog snores louder than an old grandpa. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, After Koji's nap, it's time to take her for a walk. Watch out. Come on. I love living in West Village. It's ideal for me getting over to Jersey. Basically just everything all put together, it makes it the most sense for me to live here and I love it. Come on, Goody. <laughs> ah! Walking and having a dog in the city is unlike anything else. City dogs, they have no shame. Oh, <laughs> good girl. You know that you have a city dog when they go right on the sidewalk. With Koji the dog properly walked, Dax and friends head out for some fun. All right, it's a good thing I have golf clubs here. I can extend. Hailing a cab in New York City is always uh, an interesting experience. Um, it's hit or miss. Nope, nope, he's, he's full. No, come on, come on, man. Yes, no, no. This is proper technique right here. Proper technique, but the guy turned left, so I'm not really no. I'm not really sure what uh, what to do here. I like to think my form while hailing a cab is uh, is immaculate, but sometimes you know uh, cab drivers don't like it and they just drive right by you. McCarty would finally get a ride, 
destination, the Hudson River. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Wow, this is Beautiful. So cool. All right, lock, lock and load. Four. The night before a game, I like to get out. So uh, we just decided to have a real easy day at the driving range, hit a few balls, um, you know, something active, but not too strenuous on the body. Really social. Oh, connection. Dude, that hit the back, that hit the back net. I mean, honestly. I just don't think you're focusing on the ball. I know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? Yep. <laughs> it's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. Come on. This is not happening right now. Former teammate Matt Castle now plays for the Philadelphia Union. The game is a day away, but the two friends start the competition here. Longest drive right now. All right. You go, you go. I'm going to use a little one. I think I don't, look, look. I know you need like a big driver to like make up for whatever you're lacking in physical stance, but I don't need a big club to hit it far. You go first, go ahead. Oh, that's oh my. No, it's wherever it hits the net. Bam, hit the net right around like 120, I'd say. <laughs> Matt is a very competitive guy, just like myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's pretty, pretty ugly. <laughs> oh, all right, so I won that one. Oh. I won that round. I take my competitiveness to a, a different level. Can we win? Woo! <laughs> I expect myself to be perfect in everything that I do. Yeah! It's just, it's just when the when the pressure's on. Hold on. What are you guys three? It's over. Right? Dude, no, it's not over yet. It's not it's over yet. Over. I hate losing so much to the point where sometimes I'll just tell myself I didn't lose. All right, we'll call it a we'll call it a draw. <laughs> I lost that one. That was good. You admitted it. You got that? All right, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> a rare admission of defeat ends this friendly competition. With the real game just 24 hours away, the two friends are about to become adversaries. I really just want to push Castle over in the side. <laughs> <laughs> game day. Tonight, the New York Red Bulls will host the Philadelphia Union in a crucial Eastern Conference battle. And after a long night's sleep and a full day's rest, Dax McCarty heads to the stadium. This is where you earn your money, right here when you're on your way to the stadium and you're going to the game and you're preparing to play a, a big rival. I mean, these are the moments that professional athletes live for. You can put as many X's and O's on a chalkboard as you want for a rivalry game, but what it really comes down to is if you match and surpass the intensity and the heart and the desire that the other team's willing to put in, then you've already won half the battle. Most of the time, I want to visualize exactly what I have to do on the field and what I have to do to be successful, and it changes every game. I switch myself off from all the exterior factors, all the all the stuff going on outside the field, and you just really hone in on what you have to do in the game. And so for me, it's just a mental switch that I flip. Philly is one point behind us in the standings. If you win, you can jump into first place, and if you lose, you can essentially drop to fourth or fifth place. So. It's extremely important for us to win this game tonight. This is a game for first place. Listen up, guys. Total concentration and commitment for 90 minutes tonight. Get that in your mind right from the start. Dax, you're going back to the traditional uh, role that you were playing all year. You're a holding guy. You're a fortress right in front of our back four. Total concentration and commitment with things like this. Picking this out tonight. Three points is ours. Let's go, boys.
The Philly-New York rivalry has always been really, really prominent. Whenever we play them, there's always an extra little bit of spice, an extra added element to those games because of how close we are and because of how much our fans care about winning these games. We want to make sure that at the end of the game, our fans are the ones singing and cheering and, and smiling, and the Philly fans are going home with that, that long bus ride, hopefully that hour-long bus ride seems like five hours for him. Two teams, two cities that don't like each other very much, walking out in front of a big crowd here tonight in Harrison, New Jersey. We know Philly's going to be a tough game, but three points, especially at home in front of our home fans, is always a must. New York going for a fourth straight home victory and retake first place in the Eastern Conference, 8.16 p.m. A sold-out crowd of 25,000 plus is in a frenzy as the game gets underway. Both these teams are well motivated to go top spot in the Eastern Conference if they can. Referee Jair Marufo gets us underway. With all-star Tim Cahill and living legend Thierry Henry on the pitch, Red Bull players can often be overshadowed. Cahill, Henry, McCarty. But Dax McCarty always makes his presence felt. And now McCarty the other way for the Red Bulls. He sits at about 5'8", 150 pounds or something like that, but somehow he manages to win every single tackle he gets into. Can you see those big bodies from the back line? I'm sure throughout his life he was never the biggest guy in the field, never the strongest, um, and I'm sure that motivated him in some way. McCarty doing very well to block the passing lane for Connor Casey. MLS is uh, it's a very unforgiving league. It's very fast-paced and it's very physical. So I can't always win the physical battle, and I know that. So for me, I have to kind of use my brain a little bit more, and I have to outsmart those guys. Now Dax McCarty getting involved. McCarty's cross, McMath chasing it, and he's got the catch. He really is the engine of our team, I think. He just kind of does the dirty work. He cleans up right in the middle of the field. It's almost like as he goes, we go as a team. Here's Dax McCarty. And in the 34th minute, Dax gets his team going with a setup pass to the corner. McCarty, Philadelphia pinned back here. Steele on the ball, Miller making the run, the cross from Steele, the header is just tipped over there by McMath. A near perfect cross, a solid head, a quality chance to score denied by a fingertip save. Spindle rising up with the flick and tested McMath for the first time tonight. Near the end of the first half. Billy looks to take the lead. Trying to find Casey who gets in behind. Casey gets back to the ball. Casey shot blocked by Sagaya. A great defensive slot preserves the top. Ibrahim Sagaya making his first start at center back, getting his body in the way. But the scoreless game does not sit well with the Red Bulls. It's a first half that New York dominated, but the top scoring first half team in MLS shut out. As McCarty's 36 hours near an end, he and his team will have to adjust in the second half. They are to secure three critical points in the standings. sold-out crowd of over 25,000 remains exciting. The grows anxious. All needs to move quicker. The sharpness wasn't there, and it needs to be there in the second half. It's halftime, and the New York Red Bulls are locked in a scoreless tie with the Philadelphia Union. And as Dax McCarty and his teammates take the field, they know what's at stake over the next 45 minutes. They will be sitting atop the Eastern Conference when they go to sleep this evening. We're obviously expected to win. Our fans expect us to win. Um, we expect ourselves to win. McCarty bouncing around as ever. Philadelphia is very good at what they do. Eric! But we're at home. We should be putting the pressure on them. We should be dictating how we want the game to go, not vice versa. Both these teams want first place after tonight. With the second half just 15 minutes old, McCarty's pass helps put the pressure on. McCarty has a couple options, crossing in towards Cahill and just too tall. 
The Red Bulls control the tempo. Again, New York holds it in. Philadelphia can't get the ball right now. And constantly attack the goal. Alexander cutting out of his left, urged to shoot. Instead, the pass for Henri, the return. Alexander to the byline, crosses. It's still in play. Cahill's headers covered up in all the traffic by Zach McBath but remain unable to break through. Philadelphia Union backline bending but not breaking at the moment. Then, in the 73rd minute, Philadelphia returns fire. That ball takes a deflection off Alave. It falls for Connor Casey. Casey now onto his left. Casey will shoot. It's blocked. Latou on the end of it. Latou gets a shot away. It's off the bar. Three to offside. The flag is up. It's a miss anyway from Hopano as he was broken up from behind by Sagaya. Mere inches can make all the difference. Sebastian Latou denied the goal by the crossbar. The game remains scoreless. Now a warning across the bow of New York. Let's see how they respond. McCarty and the Red Bulls battle. Steal on the pass for McCarty. Steal on the turn. Steal the left footed shot is just wide. The Union battle back. Looking for the switch. Latou and Barclays. Latou controls. Latou slips it through. That's Hopin on side save. Just enough by Roberson, cleared away by Holgerson. And in extra time, with three points hanging in the balance, the Red Bulls get a corner kick. Seventh corner of the night for New York. Fans rising to their feet at Red Bull Arena. Everyone coming back for Philadelphia. Just about everyone coming forward for the Red Bulls. Thierry Henry. Rips this one in, McMath stays at home, Barclay just hitters right to the feet of a thankful Zach McMath. That may just be it, that indeed is it. All the expectation about a winner going to first place in the Eastern Conference goes for not. Sometimes a tie can feel like a win, but at home, after controlling so much of the game and with so much at stake, this tie feels a lot like a loss. One that leaves McCarty in unfamiliar territory. Speechless. <sighs> With disappointment still fresh in his mind, Dax McCarty heads out and heads home. His 36 hours come to an end with a somber walk on the streets of New York City and a moment to reflect. You have to have a short memory when you play professional sports. You can't get too happy when you win a big game and, and you can't get too down when uh, a result doesn't go your way. You move on, prepare for next week.